Hello, in this screencast I'd like to teach you about the uh, feature of Mojo Portal that allows you to host multiple sites in a single installation based on host names or domain names. Now, to understand this, you have to know a little bit about how names are resolved to IP addresses. So we're going to cover that also in this video. But the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and create a new site. This is the first site that's already created. It has a few pages. I click Administration. I go to Site Settings. And I choose from the drop-down New Site. And we're not going to do anything fancy here. We'll just call it Site 2. That's the name of the site. And it will, by default, it'll get the same settings as uh, this this parent site. But we'll go ahead and give it a different skin, uh, just to make it look a little different, so that we can know the site is working. So we create the site. Now notice some additional tabs appear here. We've got the host name tab, and we've got the features tab. Not all features are installed by default. So if you want to add features to the site, you just choose them and then add them to the site. Okay, so now we want to say uh, what you know, a domain name or a host name. So uh, for our testing on our local purposes, we can make up whatever we want. And we'll just say uh, www.cheeseburger.com. We'll add that host name. Now, obviously, you know, that host name is not going to work right now if we just go up here and say, actually, well, we might actually be a site there. It probably is. It's a big domain name. Okay, so there's actually a site at cheeseburger.com. But for our purposes, it, it won't matter. We can still test on a local machine using whatever domain name we want. And that's where the part about understanding how names resolved IP addresses works. Um, you may have heard of DNS servers, and that is where, you know, really most of your name resolution comes from DNS servers uh, from your internet service provider you've got some DNS servers that are kind of attached to your network card and so your machine asks these DNS servers uh, what's the address for this name and the DNS server returns the name back but what people don't <clears throat> often understand is that before your machine ever asks a DNS server about a host name it first checks its host file now, a host file is just a text file, and there's one on every machine, whether it be Windows, Linux, Macintosh. On Unix systems like Linux and Macintosh, it'll be located in the Etc. folder, and it's just a plain text file named Hosts with no extension. On Windows, as we'll see, and of course, we must mention that this file is protected. So, in order to open it up with a text editor, you've got to run it as administrator. So, we're going to right click on Notepad and choose Run as Administrator. We'll talk about why that's important from a security position. Now, I've just opened this file recently, so it's kind of remembering my last location, but you don't see anything here, do you? It's, it's really protected. It's a hidden file, but you can go to this folder, uh, Windows, System32, Drivers, etc. And that's where the host file is. Click Open, and it opens, and it's a text file. Now, you may have always wondered, how, how does localhost work? What is localhost? That is just a convention. Um, all machines have what is known as a loopback address, and that's this one right here, 127.0.0.1. You may have seen some t-shirt geek jokes. There's no place like 127.0.0.1. That's That means the home machines. It means this machine, and it means that on every machine. So localhost, you cannot talk to another sh machine using localhost because it maps to that address. Now this other address is a a newer IPv6 address. We'll leave that for another discussion. The internet is running out of IP4 addresses, which is what we typically use now. And you'll notice I've got a few extra entries in here. These are just machines in my local network where I've made it convenient to talk to them by name. But what I wanted to show you here is, is I can just add 127.0.0.1 www.cheeseburger.com and I can save the file. And now my machine is not going to see the one on the internet because it asks my host file first before it ever talks to a DNS server. And now we can see that our second site is working, site 2 that we just created. Uh, it works. And so this is kind of, you know, what makes it important for security purposes. You know, what if I put www.google 
dot com. You know, uh, now you'll see that when I do that, it goes back to the first site. Why? Because we didn't specify a host name for attached to any site, and by default, any host name that resolves to the IP address is going to go to that first site, assuming the site is answering all requests on that IP address. But now what we can do is we can go back in uh, on the original site where we signed in. We can go back into administration, site settings, and we'll choose site two again. And we'll add another host name. And now, if I go back here, we see the second site again. Oh, wait. Actually, we have to kind of touch the web.config file to make it recycle the app pool here. So it's still caching it to the other site. So there we go. I fixed that. Um, so this is why you can see that DNS can be a very dangerous thing if uh, someone can fool you into thinking you're at google.com and someone can fool you into thinking you're at bankofamerica.com and that's why you you know an attack route might be for a virus to try to modify your host file and tell you to go somewhere else for Bank of America and they might put up a site that looks just like Bank of America and hopes that you will enter their enter your Bank of America password and then they can steal your password so that's why it's very important this this file is locked down um, and also, you know, these risks also apply to DNS spoofing. So, you know, you're trusting those DNS servers out on the Internet. Um, but that's a quick lesson in, in how these names are resolved. Uh, obviously, I don't want to keep that because I want to be able to use Google. Um, and I hope that explains it. And I hope you saw how easy it is to create a secondary site. The, the, the first site is always the administrative site. It, it, uh, Child sites can't create additional child sites, but from the first site, you can create and configure child sites and assign what features are allowed in that site.